transmitiendo nuestra comunidad al mundo. Good morning, buenos días, buonasera to our friends who are following us from Italy. The Consulate General of Mexico in Nogales is very proud to have today the presence of Alexander Lapierre, who is going to present to us the legacy and life of Father Francisco Eusebio Quino. This fascinating man who was a traveler, a cartographer, a benefactor to Sonora in Arizona, who was born in Italy but now belongs to Arizona, Sonora, and Baja California, who through cultural ties has helped to integrate a community, a very strong community in this part of the world of the country and of both Mexico and the United States is going to be presented today. So we're very happy to have him here. Thank you so much for your presence at uh, this event. About Alexander Lapierre, let me tell you some things. Among many other things that he has done, he now works as the director of Tubac Arizona-based nonprofit Border Community Alliance with the mission dedicated to bridging the border and fostering community through education, collaboration, and cultural exchange. Prior to the nonprofit sector, Alex worked for the National Park Service at several sites in New Mexico and Arizona, including to Macacory National Historical Park in the fields of historic preservation and interpretation. A graduate from, of the University of Arizona, Alex's study and research focuses on the Hispanic heritage and culture of the American Southwest and Mexico. This is an honor for me personally and an honor for the consulate to have him here because as he will show to you, there is a strong link between our communities and Father Francisco Eusebio Quino is part of the legacy of a bicultural, binational community. So it's very important for us to understand how and why this happened because we're convinced that the Mexican consulate in Nogales and we're convinced that the Mexican government that cultural ties are more important than ever to understand each other, to dialogue uh, between nations and between friends because culture ties friends and that's the most important thing. Now, let's start with a trailer, The Pilgrimage to Magdalena by the Border Community Alliance. Thank you so much. Every year in Arizona and Sonora, Mexico, thousands of people make a pilgrimage to Magdalena de Quino, Sonora. Uh, the mix of people there, you know, Mexicanos from both sides of the border, Atom, uh, Yoemim, you know, it was just this incredible mix of people. Muy bien, pues las fiestas de San Francisco Javier, que también se le conocen como fiestas de octubre, tienen su origen desde los tiempos en que estuvo aquí el Padre Quino. Estas sociedades eh, tenían una base fundamental que era vivir en el desierto. El desierto se vive caminándolo, recorriéndolo. The Tejona Ojotam, in a very special way, they pray, they sing, they re read letters to the saint. We used to walk through the water. And so to walk through the wash and then come up where the church was. And as I walked through there, that's where it kind of really hit me and I got very emotional. I think this pilgrimage really represents the power of the people and their resiliency and their ability to uphold the cultural traditions over time. I feel like I'm heading south from Nogales to Magdalena on this spiritual journey and I'm going through this tough pain. And I put myself in, in a lot of immigrants' uh, shoes where it's the opposite for them. They're walking miles and miles and miles through the desert, dealing with this pain. Cuando se celebra las fiestas a San Francisco Javier, no va a haber frontera que impida que lleguen los pueblos originarios acá, provenientes de Estados Unidos, no, no, la, no la va a haber, por más moros. Uh, if I'm walking along and somebody sees, drives by, there's a chance that they'll open their car window and holler out, Ya mero! You're almost there.
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I would also like to thank the consul and the wonderful staff of the Consulado General de Mexico in Nogales, Arizona, uh, as well for the invitation to present really on one of my favorite subjects, a uh, historical figure, uh, uh, Padre Eusebio Francisco Quino. And I think it's the most appropriate place to be giving this talk because uh, Padre Quino was really the first diplomat here in the borderlands. So today's presentation, we're going to be going over the early life of Father Quino, his Jesuit formation, his arrival in New Spain, his expedition to Baja California, his assignment to the Pimeria Alta, his explorations, his missionization, uh, his cartography, his legacy, and also talk about a wonderful town in northern Sonora known as Magdalena de Quino, where Padre Quino's uh, final resting place is. So to begin talking about Father Kino, we'll start with his early life. Uh, Father Kino was born in 1645, August 10th, in the community of Segno, Italy. Uh, at the time of his birth, it was actually part of the Holy Roman Empire that later became the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Uh, so he himself was really uh, from a borderlands. Uh, he was from the part of Italy where uh, meets with Switzerland, uh, Austria, Liechtenstein, and Germany. Uh, and uh, his surname was actually Eusebio Cini. Uh, they later Hispanicized it to Kino when he arrived here in New Spain. Uh, at, at, at a young age, Kino was actually afflicted with uh, a, a really un unknown uh, sickness, and he was actually almost on his deathbed. And when his confessor came uh, to him, uh, the confessor uh, told him to entrust his soul uh, into his patron saint, who is St. Francis Xavier, one of the founders of the Jesuit order. And Kino responded that, that indeed that he would entrust his, his fate to uh, St. Francis Xavier, his patron, and that if he were to um, get over this sickness, that he would follow in his example. Um, this example of this missionization that uh, Francis Xavier took all, all over uh, Asia. Um, and sure enough, he, he, he survived this sickness and entered schools, uh, Jesuit schools, in not only Sen uh, Trent, but also in Austria and Germany. And he was an amazing Renaissance man. Uh, he, uh, he taught mathematics, astro astronomy, uh, cartography. Uh, he was even offered the chair of the, the head of the mathematics department in Ingolstadt, uh, Bavaria, Germany. Uh, and also even uh, for the Duke of Bavaria to be the, 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 the son's tutor. Uh, however, he stayed true to his promise that he made uh, almost on his deathbed to follow in the footsteps and become a missionary, despite all those opportunities. Um, he arrived in New Spain uh, shortly later, uh, where uh, actually he uh, was involved with a lot of the different uh, local people, including uh, Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz. Uh, he had actually observed a famous comet in 1680 uh, and actually published a work uh, documenting his scientific findings about this comet. And when he arrived in uh, Mexico, he published this document uh, and became uh, a kind of a companion, uh, a writing companion of Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz. In fact, Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz wrote a poem uh, for Father Quino and they exchanged letters uh, during his time in New Spain. Uh, and here you can see the great comet of 1680, uh, the work that he, that he published when he was in Mexico after arriving uh, from Spain. Uh, and it's the earliest scientific publications in America. Because of his, his, his reputation for being a Renaissance man, uh, a cartographer, a map maker, uh, he was selected for a special expedition uh, to Baja California. It was the first Spanish expedition to Baja California. Uh, and so he was sent over there. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the mission uh, didn't really last. Uh, there was a lack of water uh, and uh, they had abandoned Baja California. But he always had his hopes to return to Baja California one day. Instead, he was actually sent up to what's now the Pim what's called the Pimaria Alta back then, which is now the states of Arizona and Sonora, Mexico. Uh, and he was sent up there uh, by the Jesuit superiors. Where is the Pimaria Alta? It's a historical region now between southern Arizona and northern Sonora. It's actually bordered by the Colorado, Gila, San Pedro rivers, uh, and also the Rio Magdalena in the south. Uh, the name comes from actually the indigenous people that were here, uh, the Tohono O'odham, the, the upper Pimas. And here you can see the different diverse uh, uh, indigenous people that inhabited uh, uh, this, the modern state of Sonora, including the Seris, the Opatas, 
uh, and also the Yaqui and the Mayos in the south. So when Kino was exploring, uh, he actually took advantage of all the different rivers, uh, almost like uh, the Niles in Egypt. In this arid land, uh, he needed the rivers not only to, to replenish uh, with water his, his cattle uh, and his horses and himself, uh, but also it was a way to find his, his way back when he was exploring the Sonoran Desert. And it, those, these were the roots of exploration, settlement, missionization, commerce, and transportation in the colonial era. Uh, so Kino, uh, you know, he's probably best known as being a missionary. Uh, he served 24 years here in the Pima Maria Alta, and he founded 21 missions uh, in those 24 years, so almost a mission a, a year. Uh, and he first founded the mission of Nuestra Señora de, Lo, de, de Dolores, just north of Cucurpe on the Rio San Miguel in Sonora. Uh, many of these mission communities would later evolve to become towns and cities in Sonora and Arizona. As a cartographer, Kino was a distinguished map maker. Um, due to their accuracy, maps were, his maps were published uh, in Europe during his lifetime. And really, they were the best maps for over, over a century and a half. Uh, his depictions of California uh, put, put to, to, to end this idea that, that California was an island. Many of the original maps in the 1500s had this uh, depiction of California as an island. And it wasn't until his explorations that he was able to prove that, in fact, that California was one, actually one of the longest peninsulas in the entire world. So what, it, what are some of Kino's legacies here uh, in, in Arizona, in Sonora? Well, uh, one thing that's really a, an amazing a legacy that persists to, to this day is his effect on, on not only agriculture, but gastronomy. Uh, as Big Jim Griffith, uh, a folklorist uh, here in Southern Arizona, the founder of the Tucson Meet Yourself Festival, uh, every time you enjoy a carne asada burrito, you should kind of uh, acknowledge Father Kino because he was the one that really brought the, the cattle uh, he was the one that brought the wheat, uh, which was uh, really uh, revolutionary here in, in the Sonoran Desert because when, when he arrived, the indigenous only had one planting season, you know, the three sisters, the corn, the beans, and the squash. When the Jesuits arrived here in Sonora, they discovered that the winter season was the perfect season to grow the winter a crop of wheat. Uh, and so by bringing that wheat, he actually improved the food security here uh, in, in the Sonoran Desert. Uh, which was often precarious due to um, uh, rains not arriving in the monsoon season. But other, other vegetables and fruits, like the famous membrillo, which we know as quince uh, in, in the United States, uh, that is made into a really uh, famous dessert in northern Sonora called dulce de membrillo. Uh, I, I like to imagine Father Kino on the log hard, uh, dusty trails of Sonora and Arizona with his saddlebags full of uh, dried machaca, the dried beef, the carne seca, and also the, the, uh, the Spanish colonial power bars of the time, which were the, the, the dulce de membrillo, the quince paste. Um, <clears throat> another important Jesuit cultural legacy that we have from Kino here in the Southwest is the fact that he was really the original first cowboy. Uh, he brought this cowboy, this Western culture uh, uh, that we now know today in the United States. Uh, he was really the progenitor of, the, of that. Um, before he would even found missions, he would drop off cattle so that the different in, uh, Native American villages could start their own herds. Uh, so he had that foresight. And not only that, uh, the missions were really critical in the 17th and 18th century. Uh, they really were almost served like the Walmarts of that era to, to, um, to feed uh, uh, not only the indigenous populations uh, and supply them, but also uh, Spanish colonial civil society, like the, 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 the miners that were in the Sierra Madre Occidental, very close to the missions. So we have this cowboy culture to really thank for Father Kino as well and ranching. Uh, and another important legacy since we're here at the, con uh, the consulate of, of Mexico in Nogales is his, his legacy of diplomacy. Uh, he really sought peace between the diverse indigenous people and the Spanish uh, that were arriving from the south. Uh, he advocated for disputes to be settled peacefully. Um, uh, one example is during the 1695 uprising, uh, Pima uprising here um, in northern Sonora, uh, when they killed uh, Father Sayeta, his um, companion, uh, he realized that, um, that retribution, violence only be beget violence. And so he actually rode uh, nearly 1,500 miles down to Mexico City uh, to get a special accord from the government 
uh, to return back to the Pima Maria Alta so that, um, that the Spanish wouldn't seek retribution and, and that there would be further violence. Uh, so he really was a, a, a diplomat uh, at, at the time. And I think this has to do with a lot of the fact that he was from a borderlands himself. He was from an area where Italy, Switzerland, and Austria meet. Uh, and as kind of an outsider, both to the Spanish colonial society and the Native Americans, I think this was a natural role uh, uh, that, that Kino uh, rose to the occasion for as being a peacemaker. Um, uh, and we have the good news as well that Kino is on his way to possible sainthood. Uh, last, uh, this last year, he was raised by the Vatican to the status of venerable, and uh, he's two steps away uh, from being uh, a saint. Uh, uh, for his, to be blessed, he needs uh, a, a, a miracle. Um, and so people can actually uh, request Venerable Father Kino for an intercession. Uh, and so once the Vatican approves uh, the first miracle, uh, he, he can be under the terms of blessed, and later he will be, have his sainthood. And finally, today I want to talk about uh, Father Kino and his connection uh, to a wonderful town in northern Sonora called Magdalena de Kino. Uh, it was his final resting place. Uh, he died there in 1711, in March of 1711, uh, when he was uh, celebrating Mass uh, to dedicate a new chapel, dedicated to his patron saint, St. Francis Xavier. Uh, and he fell ill and was buried within that chapel. And uh, in the 1960s, um, a uh, binational effort was underway to discover where his final resting place uh, was. And sure enough, they found his final resting place on what's now the plaza of, of Magdalena de Quino. And that's when they changed the name uh, to honor him, uh, de Quino. And nowadays, it's one of two Pueblo Magicos in the state of Sonora alongside Alamos. And so today you can actually visit and look down into the crypt and see Father Quino's final resting place in this beautiful uh, plaza. Um, and it's also an important legacy that Father Kino has is really this legacy of peacemaking um, and that con until continuing to today, he um, is revered by not only uh, people from Mexico, but also from the United States and Italy. Uh, and uh, every year in October, there's a very famous uh, pilgrimage that takes place um, that three nations participate in, uh, the Tohono O'odham Nation, uh, the American people and also Mexican people converge uh, to, to make the pilgrimage to, to Magdalena uh, to celebrate uh, Father Kino's patron saint, uh, St. Francis Xavier. Uh, and it's a wonderful tradition uh, that you were able to see earlier on the trailer uh, for the, the film that we've made, uh, the documentary on the pilgrimage uh, to Magdalena. Um, and as uh, uh, Father Vicente Lopez has said, uh, for me, uh, for him, the real miracle is the fact that people are still converging on Magdalena and participating in this pilgrimage three centuries uh, after the passing of Kino. Uh, so his legacy still persists, and it's something that for us to look to today as an historical example of, of really bridging bridges between the two nations and between cultures. Uh, and with that, I want to thank you very much uh, for taking the time uh, to listen to me today on Padre Eusebio Francisco Quino. Don Alberto Chini, presidente dell'associazione Padre Giuseppe Francesco Chini di Segno, paese natale di Padre Chino. Innanzitutto voglio salutare e ringraziare per l'invito il Consolato Generale del Messico a Milano, il Consolato Generale del Messico a Nogales, la Border Community Alliance con il suo direttore Alexander Lapierre e tutti gli amici di Padre Chino. Padre Chino lega in modo indissolubile le nostre terre i luoghi della sua nascita e formazione giovanile, con i luoghi dove ha operato dedicando la sua intera vita di missionario, esploratore, cartografo, coltivatore e allevatore, ma soprattutto difensore dei più deboli. L'eredità che ci ha lasciato è immensa, la sua figura è attualissima, i suoi insegnamenti e il suo esempio di vita sono stati guida per i popoli che ha incontrato più di tre secoli fa, ma sono validissimi ancora oggi. 
numerose sono le persone che oggi operano il suo nome in tutto il mondo. La conoscenza più diffusa della figura di Padre Chiedi in Italia risale ai primi decenni del secolo scorso. Nel 1929 una lapide in suo ricordo è stata posta sulla facciata della chiesa di Segno. Nel 1930 la città di Trento gli ha dedicato un monumento. Negli anni 80 del secolo scorso a Segno si è formato un comitato chiniano che si è trasformato poi nel 92 in associazione culturale Padre Giorgio Francesco Chini con il compito statutario di studiare e divulgare la conoscenza della figura di Padre Eusebio, promuovere studi, seminari, pubblicazioni di testi in materiale divulgativo, gestire il museo a lui dedicato a segno, provvedere al recupero di documentazione d'archivio e da altri reperti in Italia e all'estero, programmare viaggi di studio, visite guidate ed escursioni per conoscere i luoghi dove si è svolta l'opera di Padre Chini sostenerne la causa di beatificazione, proporre ed organizzare celebrazioni commemorative e convegni. Tutte queste attività si sono svolte negli anni attraverso numerosi scambi culturali, viaggi in Arizona e Messico, che hanno permesso di creare una rete di conoscenze e di amici di Padre Chino in tutto il mondo. Grande impulso ci ha dato nel 91 l'inaugurazione del monumento equestre posto in piazza Segno una delle tre statue dell'artista messicano Giulia Martinez, donate dalla Arizona Historic Society di Tucson nel segno, il paese natale, a Magdalena de Chino, dove sono osservati i suoi resti mortali e a Tucson. Il centro culturale Padre Chino, inaugurato nel 98, contiene numerose opere di artisti messicani che hanno voluto rendere omaggio a Padre Chino con il loro lavoro. Uno fra tutti, il Nereo della Peña Garcia, che con i suoi splendidi murales ci fa sentire il calore e la generosità del popolo messicano. Il nostro impegno è assiduo e costante anche nel sostenere la causa di beatificazione del Padre Chino. Lo scorso luglio Papa Francesco ne ha riconosciuto le virtù eroiche ed è stato dichiarato venerabile. È con grande piacere che assistiamo a tante attività ed eventi che si svolgono in Sonora, Bassa California e Arizona per ricordare questo grande missionario ed esploratore che unisce le nostre terre. Grazie ancora da parte di tutti noi per l'evento di oggi, che ci permette ancora una volta di parlare del Padre Chino in tutto il mondo. Thank you so much for, uh, to Signore Alberto Chini, who is a descendant of Father Chino. That was enlightening. And thank you also to our Embassy of Mexico in Vatican, to the Consulate General of Mexico in Milan, to Santa Cruz County School Superintendent, Mr. Alfredo Velasquez, to the Border Community Alliance, thank you so much, guys, and to Will Love Nogales. This, is, uh, this has been a, a great event. It was enlightening for me. And as you can see, uh, Father Kino was the forefather of the carne asada, so he deserves a monument <laughs> in every part of Northern Mexico and all of Mexico together. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alexander. That My was pleasure, amazing. Counsel. And please allow me to to give you a diploma to thank you for this uh, incredible presentation on behalf uh. of the Consulate of Mexico in Nogales. This, uh, I hope we, this is the, the first step of many lectures that we can give to us. And I was talking to him that it would be amazing to talk about another traveler, Mr. Albert Nunez Cabeza de Vaca, who also happened to travel through Arizona and through Sonora because he was lost in Florida, that's another story, but he also came through here. So I think Sonora and Arizona are places for travelers, for adventurers, for people with dreams, because this is a borderland and the border has the opportunity and brings the opportunity to, to communicate and to do more. The limit at the border is blurry and that's, for me, the most important metaphor. It's a bridge to do things and to communicate. So thank you so much, Alexander. Thank you. And, and thank staff. you so much all. Have a great day. Transmitiendo nuestra comunidad al mundo.